Hello and welcome, this is Roofmonger, and this is my beginner's guide to Dead or Alive 6. So the purpose of this guide is to walk you through basically how the basics of Dead or Alive 6 works. The gameplay systems, the core of the flow of combat, that kind of stuff. So if you've never played Dead or Alive before, or only barely familiar, or say you're a lapsed player and haven't played in a good while and need a refresher, this will be the video for you. I do want to say thank you very much to Koei Tecmo as they have granted me an early copy of the game so I can get a jump start on the guides for Dead or Alive 6, so thank you again very much for that. So let's just start with the absolute basics first. Dead or Alive 6 is indeed a 3D fighting game. So you have full 3D movement here. You can go in and out of the background. Uh, each stage is defined in its own certain ways to have its own special boundaries and uh, special ticks to make them go. You have to watch out for walls, that kind of stuff. So it is a 3D fighting game in that regard. Now that said, uh, it is a little different than other 3D fighters as um, compared to a lot of other 3D fighting games, uh, Dead or Alive characters tend to have a lot more options on the table than uh, your usual 3D fighting game. So, what I mean by that is this. So, if you're not aware, Dead or Alive 6 has a counter system. Uh, it's called the hold system. So, you can counter all sorts of attacks. So, high attacks, mid attacks, low attacks, it doesn't matter. And it can have a special animation. You can jump off the wall. It doesn't matter what it is. You can counter everything that's basically not a grab. Uh, in other games, there have been characters that do certain things like this, uh, but those characters, that was their whole defining uh, gimmick of the in the game, right? Uh, their whole thing was they can counter everything, and that was the defining part of the character, and in Dead or Alive, everybody can do it. Another thing that is very unique to Dead or Alive 6 and Dead or Alive in general is the emphasis on throws. So grappling is definitely not new by any stretch in any 3D fighter, right? Uh, but every character uh is a lot more grapple even characters that don't really care about grappling is a major part of their game plan uh grapples are a lot more important to uh people in this game than other 3d fighters so for example in other 3d fighters uh if a character could grapple someone while they were crouching they were definitely a grappler character right uh it was a kind of a unique thing only grapple heavy characters could get people while they're crouching in Dead or Alive, even characters that are not grapplers can do this. So I'm using Bass right now, and he is a more grapple-focused character. But uh, even characters like, say, Christy, who are very strike-focused, very mix-up heavy characters, everybody can throw people while they're crouching. So once again, just to stress the point, unlike other games where uh, being you know an emphasis on grapples or an emphasis on countering other people's attacks are kind of character-specific, in Dead or Alive, this is just part of the base move set. Uh, some people have better counters than other, yes, absolutely, and some people have better throws than other people, uh, but everyone has a, a kind of, uh, as a basic moveset, everyone is very proficient in these things. So now let's talk about kind of the base of the combat in Dead or Alive 6, as it is powered by what we call the triangle system. So there's our strikes, and that's self-explanatory, the counters, aka holds, so you can counter everything and throws. So to get really simplistic without going into like a lot of the edge case stuff here, because you know, uh, when you make rules in a fighting game, you always tend to break the rules. Uh, the triangle system works as such. So a strike will beat a throw, a throw will beat a hold, and a hold will beat a strike. And generally speaking, the core gameplay system revolves around this. So now let's talk about the first part of the triangle real quick here. Uh, that is holds beating strikes. So strikes, you can just kind of do whatever, just go at the enemy and all that kind of stuff, right? So we have the enemy uh, bot here set to automatically try to hold against high strikes. So if we do this string here, no such luck because there's a gap and they're allowed to hold through it. Uh, but if we do this string here, they have correctly guessed the high and they get the reward. So it's a not insubstantial amount of damage as you see here. Uh, once again, certain characters are better at uh, counter mechanic, the hold mechanic, than others. Certain people get more rewards or setups off of it than other people do. But that's just kind of the basics. So if I know they're prepared to counter against a high attack, well, then it's just as simple as, okay, well, I'm not going to do a high attack. I'll do a mid or a low or whatever. Uh, there are four ways this works. Uh, we can counter all highs, medium punches, mid punches, mid kicks, and all lows. So you have to successfully guess against those things. And once again, I say guess, but it's uh, definitely much more of an educated guess. If you just mash, it's never going to work out for you. And you hold incorrectly, they will get a damage bonus against you. Now that said, say someone's super either prescient or lucky against you, and they manage to hold out everything you're going to do, right? Oh, that's where the other part of the triangle comes in. Because, uh, you know, holds are very easy to do. They're very simple by design, right? It's always just a direction in the block button, like up, back, back, or down, back. So it's not like a, ma a level of mechanical difficulty to do it, but say they're just, you know, on, they're inside you, they've downloaded you, they know what they're, you're going to do, right? Well, it's just as simple as toss them. So they go for the throw, and as you can see there, look how much that did. So here's what Bass's throw does normally. 
This is the bare basic throw. You can see there, not insubstantial, but you know, not quite the level we saw there. So, uh, and this is against the corner too, so even more so, uh, that's this wall specific throw. But uh, if you get thrown while you're attempting to hold out of something, you are going to eat a lot of damage. So as you can see there, that is uh, absolutely giant, substantial amount of damage, right? So the penalty for just mashing uh, counters against people, mashing your hold against people, uh, it's not going to work for you in this game. Uh, I guess you might strike it lucky once in a blue moon, but there are so many factors working against you. Uh, you get counter hit and take extra damage anyways if you guess the strike wrong, and if they go for a throw against your hold, you are going for a wild ride. Now, the final part of the triangle system is simply that strikes easily beat throws. So, throws, I've already seen now, look pretty strong. And just like any other fighting game, if you block, you get chucked and all that kind of stuff. So, what makes strikes beat throws? Well, it's actually uh, fairly simplistic. So, if we go to our training mode here, and we'll set the uh, bot just to throw non-stop here. So, as you can see here now, the enemy is just going to be attacking me with throws non-stop. So, in Dead or Life 6, you are allowed to tech out of basic throws, but only basic throws. Other throws you cannot tech out of. And that is very much by design because uh, the reason strikes beat uh, throws is simply for the most part, and once again, there's exceptions to all these rules as uh, everything I talked about here, but for the most part, if you are in the middle of attacking, you simply can't be thrown. It's really that cut and dry. Doesn't matter, uh, like this big boot I'm doing here, right? It doesn't matter if I'm literally frame one into the move. If I'm frame one into the move, doesn't matter. I cannot be thrown in any way, shape, or form, as you can see here. So a lot of other games, when uh, you are being attacked, if the throw hits you uh, before the attack connects, then you get thrown, not in this game. So once again, exceptions apply. Uh, but for the most part, uh, how you deal with throws, if you feel you're going to get thrown, just attack the enemy as your attacks will blow right through the throw. And that's kind of the essence of the triangle system right there. So one thing that's always very key in Dead or Alive series, and Dead or Alive 6 is no exception, is the stages and how much stages matter. Now in every 3D fighter, stages matter, yes. Uh, you know, you gotta worry about your wall stuff. In the games that are applicable, you gotta worry about ring outs. Uh, now Dead or Alive is not a ring out style game, but you know, oh, your wall combos, your wall pressure, like all that stuff's still there, right? Uh, but there's so many more factors at play than just that when it comes to stages mattering. Like something, even as something basic as this, right? So here we are. Uh, that stun lasted longer than it normally would because we were in the water. Uh, so on areas with water or snow, uh, stuns can be a lot more severe. We call those slip stuns, right? Uh, some characters even have water-specific throws that their uh, their throw gets a boost while you're in the water, right? Like that's the kind of stuff we have to worry about. And uh, more to the point here, uh, and I picked the stage for a reason. Are your pterodactyl combos on point? Because that's something you need to know on this stage, is you need to know your pterodactyl combos. Because whenever you get knocked into a pterodactyl egg on this stage, the pterodactyl will pick you up, and then you're going to get a launch from there, right? And there's a lot of unique situations like that. Like, uh, over here on this particular stage, like, we already have the water stuff. Over here is a, a fall zone, so you'll fall through and go to the different part of the stage. And then we have different kind of hazards here, so there's a lot of electrified walls for wall stuff. Uh, if you've ever watched like one of the trailers for the game, you probably know what's up over here by here by this Jeep. Because this Jeep here contains a legally distinct uh, version of a T-Rex here, not similar to any movies you've ever heard of, right? So that's a hazard even more deadly than just hitting the wall. And a lot of stages have their own various uh, travails and gimmicks where you have to worry so much more about just the wall combo. Because uh, on certain stages, uh, you can lose so much of your life. So as you can see here, this is what I'm talking about, stage mattering, right? Uh, if you knew all this ahead of time, that's a solid, what, 90% damage? So you really need to pay attention both where your back is the wall too, and uh, where you have the enemy's back too, because you can make a lot of massive setups. Now obviously that's a bit of an ideal situation, right? Uh, I had full resource, all that, and I knew kind of the optimal way to get around it, but still, that's the kind of stuff I'm talking about. And on this stage particular, like there's so many death traps and all that kind of stuff where you can really take advantage of the environment. It's much more than just simply doing the wall combo like in a lot of other fighting games.
So now just to end off the video here, I just want to talk about more, some more basic stuff here. Just some basics of the combo system, what you're going to be looking for, and how the super system works. So first up here, combo stuff. So generally speaking, uh, what you're going to be looking for in the end is a launcher. So something that launches your enemy so you can then combo them and juggle them in the air. Uh, as with a lot of other 3D fighters, that's kind of ideal, and especially so uh, because generally speaking, uh, when the enemy has their feet on the ground, for the most part, in a couple rare exceptions, they're always going to have at least a chance to counter. And uh, once again, as we went over the top of the video, just smash counter is not a good idea. It will absolutely get you beat up real bad, real quick, but still, why give them the chance, right? So you want to get them in the air and then just kind of go from there. Uh, so we have the stun system. Now, there's two kinds of stun here. So we have the critical stun and we also have a fatal stun. So when you're in critical stun, you have lost control of your character. You cannot move, although the character in critical stun can still attempt to hold out, counter out. So while you're in critical stun, you've lost control of your character and your only option is to hold out, counter out. Now, while you are in the critical stun, uh, things that would say launch, I'd like say this launcher right here. If you are in critical stun, that launch will launch higher than it did before. Uh, letting you do uh, better combos and get more hits and that kind of stuff. So it's already uh, incentivizing you to get the launcher. Now, say if I knew right away, like, oh, this is my launcher, and that's a medium punch, by the way. So if I knew I was the enemy, well, then I'm just going to medium punch counter, hold out of it, right? Uh, so you don't want to be predictable. A lot of characters tend to have multiple launchers. Uh, they're usually, not always, but usually mid punch or mid kick. Uh, some characters have highs, uh, and generally speaking, you want to have some variety because in this game, once again, if you get predictable, you're going to get held out, and then once you're held out, you've lost all your momentum, right? Uh, so generally speaking, uh, you're going to be wanting to confuse your enemy, keep them in critical stun until you're ready to do your launcher, and then go for your launcher from there. So a very basic combo example would be something like this. So we're going to start up with our opener, we get our critical stun, uh, we're going to do our launch follow-up here. Now, keep in mind what we're going to do here is forward punch up and kick, which in and of itself doesn't launch, as you can see here, but it will launch when they are in critical stun. So there we go. We launched them, and we even knocked them into the wall just to get a bit more damage, right? These are the kind of things you're looking for uh, when you're doing your basic combo structure. You don't want to get predictable. When you're looking for the launcher, uh, definitely don't always do the same thing as the enemy absolutely will be able to hold out and then, you know, kind of ruin your plans. But that's kind of the basic combo structure. Now let's use that again here with our super in mind. So you can see here, it's uh, fairly trivial after the launch, let's go right for a super. Trouble in Paradise, just like Kofi Kingston, right into the wall, a very substantial chunk of damage. Now, uh, if you're willing to roll the dice just a little bit, you can actually cash out and get even more damage. So all supers break attacks as they're so-called in this game. If you hit your block button after the initial hit connects, I see here what happened there. We didn't have the animation, right? So they were put into a fatal stun animation. So all supers or break attacks as they are called in this game. If you hit your block button after it connects, you see here, we didn't have the animation play out. Instead, they were put into the fatal stun. So first up here, Fatal Stun, just real quick here. Fatal Stun is basically a better version of the uh, Critical Stun. In Fatal Stun, you can only use a Break Hold, which is hitting back and your special button to get out of it. And that is basically a hold, a counter that takes up your super bar. So it's very strong in that way as there's only one way out. Uh, but for the purposes of what we're talking about here, uh, this is basically a restand, meaning we can go into the whole combo and then reset the enemy. So we did our combo up to that point, and as you see, the enemy is back on the ground. So we can re-combo from there and get more damage than if we let the super rock to begin with. Now, once again, they are able to break hold out. That is the risk you're going to have to run. And of course, you can always have the mind game of them, you know, doing that. And then you can attempt to throw them out of it and get your extra damage. Sure. Uh, but let's show you a combo utilizing the uh, re-stand property of your super, your break attack. So you can see here, we got a nice little chunk of damage here. And that's not even necessarily anywhere near optimal. It's just to show you uh, the idea of you can get the whole new version of a combo uh, after the restand, right? Uh, so when it comes to positioning, you know, maybe sometimes you want to let the super rock. Sometimes you want to 
make use of the stage, that kind of stuff. It's up to you. Uh, but a very strong tool, to say the least. And you can effectively double your damage output in any given combo as long as you have the bar to do a break blow into the restand afterwards. And there you have it. So if you never knew anything about the series before, I hope this was a good introduction. Uh, you know, just going through the core of how the battle system works, why stages matter, just to show you a couple example combo stuff. Uh, but yeah, it's just a very fun series, you know, like just little quality of life stuff like, hey, the wrestling characters can do wrestling stuff on the wrestling stages. Like, that's pretty cool, right? Like, that's a good quality of life stuff. And there's a lot of unique interactions like that. That's kind of stuff. That's There's a lot more where that came from, right? Uh, it just, there's a lot of love in this series. And if you don't know much about it, it's definitely a worthwhile series to try out. Uh, as of the time of making this video, uh, there will be an open beta later in the week. If you're watching this later, I'm sure it's already done with. Uh, but hey, give it a shot there. And it's a fun series, so hey, check it out. Anyways, that's it for this video. So thank you very much for watching. I hope this video has found you well. Go out and play some dead or alive.